Hello everyone! I love steam trains, so today is my lucky day! I'm in North Wales to go on a ride through the Snowdonia Mountains and learn all about these amazing machines! Woohoo! This train is just leaving the station now! Look at all that steam coming out! It's no wonder they're called steam trains! Many years ago, these trains were used to transport slate from up high in the mountains, but now they're just used to take lucky passengers on amazing train rides. Come on, let's get on board! These old fashioned carriages are very comfy. And you can even get yummy hot chocolate served straight to your seats! This train is the best! Just look at the amazing views out of the windows as we steam our way through the Snowdonia Mountains! Wow! It's beautiful here! We're all very clean and comfortable in here! But I wonder what it's like for the driver in the cabin up front! Part of the train that does all of the hard work is called the locomotive, and it's up to the driver and the fireman to keep the locomotive running and pulling all of those carriages and passengers. Steam trains run on coal, and the fireman has to shovel lots of it into the firebox to keep the engine running. This is Ian, and he's the driver of this locomotive. Ian. Please can you tell us how coal makes the train go? So this is the coal we burn on our steam engine. We put it in the fire there. And we burn it and that creates lots and lots of heat. And that heat we use to boil this water. Um, it's just like boiling your kettle at home. It makes the steam come out the top but we capture that steam and we send it to the front of this steam logo and that makes us go. To make sure there's enough coal for the journey ahead, the crew have to load up the train's coal from the coal store at the station. This is hard, tiring and dirty work. All of the crew that work on the train are volunteers too, which means they don't get paid. They do it because they love the trains. This is Claire and she's the fireman. It's her job to load the coal into the firebox and keep that fire roaring. And what I'm doing now is I'm making my fire bigger because we're pulling a very big train today. So it needs a nice, big, very hot fire to be able to do that. I love steam trains because I just find them magical. As well as loading the coal into the train, it's just as important to make sure the train has plenty of water in the tank because this is what gets turned into steam which pushes the train forwards. The crew are topping up this train's tank with water now. Wow, this one's thirsty! Ian, how do you drive a steam train? We drive a steam train by making it go faster like that and then this is the brake and this is what we use to stop ourselves. So this lever here makes us go either forwards or backwards. And that is how you drive a steam train. Let's take a look at the different parts of a steam train. Here's the cab. This is where the driver and fireman drive the train and load the fire. Inside here is the firebox, which is really, really hot. Above the firebox sits the boiler, where the water is stored. Because this is right above the fire, the water boils and turns into steam. The steam is then forced down through a pipe and pushes something called a piston, which then drives the wheels forwards or backwards. This is the chimney, which is where the smoke from the firebox can escape. And most importantly, this is the whistle. The whistle works when I pull this handle. 
And that means that steam is going up to the whistle and making the sound. Ian's connecting a carriage to the locomotive. This is called coupling. Because these trains are very old, they take a lot of looking after, which is why the Festinjog and Welsh Highland Railway have their own special garage with an amazing team of engineers, mechanics, joiners and painters. This place is a hive of activity. In here, they're building a brand new carriage from scratch. And in here, this is where the beautiful details on the outside of the carriage are painted on by hand. Well, it's time for me to say goodbye to these beautiful trains. Thanks very much to all the team at the Festinjog and Welsh Highland Railway for teaching us all about steam trains. See you again soon. Bye! Hello everyone! I'm meeting up with my old friend Mr T and his amazing ice cream truck today. I've asked for his help to organise a surprise for one of my friends. Here he comes now! Hi, Gecko! Hello, Mr T. Thanks for coming. So what's the plan? Well, I think it's about time that my friend Vicky the Ice Cream Van had a treat of her own. She's always so busy serving yummy ice cream treats to other people that I thought it was about time someone made a treat for her. What a lovely idea, Gecko. Let's make Vicky the biggest, best ice cream ever. Hop in. So, Gecko, we've got lots of amazing ice cream in my machine at the back. But to make it really special, I think we need to find some treats to put on top. Great idea, Mr T. Sounds like we've got ourselves a treasure hunt. Hey look Mr T, what's that over there? I think I see a treat box. Open it Mr T, let's see what's inside. There's two giant bags of sweets. These are going to add lots of colour to Vicky's ice cream treat and they'll be nice and chewy too. Amazing! Let's see what else we can find. Look Gecko, there's another treat box here. Send it down the slide Mr T. I wonder what it is. Hooray! It's a big box of waffles. Should we get back in the van and find some more treat boxes? So, Gecko, it's time to put some music on. Let's see if my old friends at the RNLI have seen anything. Oh, hi, Andy. You haven't seen any treat boxes round here, have you? As a matter of fact, they have. Have a look on deck. Hey, Gecko, I found one. Let's see what's inside. It's a huge bottle of my favourite sauce. Good job, Mr T. 
I wonder if there's any treasure around that pirate ship over there. Let's take a look in the treasure chest. We've found treasure. It's another treat box. Wow, it's a bag of giant marshmallows. Wow, Vicky will love them. Hey look, we're just passing Claremont Farm. Let's pop in and see if Farmer Andy has seen any treat boxes. Hey Gecko, good to see you again. Are you looking for a treat box? Yes, we are. Go and have a look in my tractor. We found another treat box. It's a giant chocolate bar. Wow, that's the biggest chocolate bar I've ever seen. I think that should be enough treats to make Vicky the most amazing ice cream creation. Let's go make it. To make the perfect ice cream creation for Vicky, we need the perfect ice cream cone. And I've got just the thing. That is brilliant. Let's get cracking. And now I think there should be something healthy in there as well. Remember them strawberries that we got from Claremont Farm? And finally, some chocolate. Hurry, Mr. T. I think she's on her way. Hello, Vicky. Lovely to see you. Me and my friend Mr T have a big surprise for you. I decided that it's about time someone made a treat just for you. After all of the amazing treats you always give to other people. So we decided to make you Vicky's treasured treat served in the perfect ice cream cone. Here you go, Vicky, just to say thank you. Did you see how happy that ice cream surprise made her, Gecko? I've never seen her so happy. That's given me an idea. Maybe we should go and give some treats to more people who deserve them. Who's ready for some free ice creams, guys? Now let's serve the amazing crew of the RNLI lifeboat. Hello guys, 
guys, how do you do? You all right? Well, guys, you lot deserve a free ice cream, so there you go. There's plenty of yummy ice cream for the amazing volunteers who work in charity shops. They raise money for good causes. There we are, Paula. Thank you very much for being such a lovely person to the community. You enjoy that, my love, and there's one there for your colleague as well, yeah? Okay then. No problem at all. Enjoy. Farmer Andy works really hard down on the farm. It's time he had a break and some yummy ice cream, all topped off with his special strawberries. Nothing puts a smile on people's faces quite like an ice cream gecko. I've loved spreading a bit of joy to Vicky and all of these amazing people. Thanks to Mr T for making all of his wonderful creations. Have a think if you could do something special to put a smile on someone's face today. I think you can really brighten up somebody's day. I'll see you again soon. Bye! Bye. Hello everyone. I'm here today at Alton Towers Resort. I'm going to have a ride on some amazing roller coasters and learn all about how they work. Roller coasters are designed for one thing, fun. No two are the same. They can do loops, twists, spins, and can go really, really fast. But how do these amazing roller coasters work? Let's take a closer look. Roller coasters run on tracks like trains, but there's lots of differences too. Trains only have one set of wheels that rest on top of the track, but these cars have three sets of wheels, one on the top, one on the side, and one underneath to grip the track. This means that the roller coaster can do things that trains can't, like going upside down while still staying on the track. But the main difference between trains and roller coasters is how they are powered. Power is what makes everything start, just like batteries in a toy helps them turn on. A roller coaster car doesn't have an engine for power. So to get the car moving fast along the track, it first needs to be pulled to the top of a very big hill. On this ride called Nemesis, a long chain pulls the car all the way to the top. The car is then released and gravity brings it down the track at whizzing speeds. Gravity is an invisible force that pulls all things down towards the earth. It's like sliding down a slide. Gravity pulls you downwards. woo -hoo! This ride, Oblivion, works in the same way. The chains slowly pull the car up to the top, which makes the people on the ride very nervous. Wow, look how high that is. This ride is a straight drop which means there is only one way down. Scary! Some rides don't get pulled up a big hill, but instead are connected to a really long metal rope. When everyone's ready, it's time for launch. The powerful rope is reeled in and pulls really hard on the car. Ready, steady, go, go, go! The rope has launched the car along the track like a huge slingshot. This ride's called Rita and it can accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 2.5 seconds. That's as fast as a racing car. When this ride needs to slow down, powerful magnets rise up and use magnetic force to slow down the car. A final set of brakes hold the train in place, bringing the ride to a stop. 
With all these twists, turns and loops, roller coasters have to be really safe. So all the people who work at Alton Towers work hard to make sure everyone on the ride is secure by loading them onto the ride carefully and checking their seat belts. Clever computers triple check the safety of all passengers too. But roller coasters don't just carry people. At this roller coaster restaurant, it's food and drinks that ride the roller coasters. When the food is ready, they're sent down the track straight to your table. Yum, yum. Well, I think that's quite enough excitement for one day. Thanks to the Alton Towers team for showing us around today. I'll see you next time. Bye! Helicopters are used all over the world for transporting passengers. But the most important use for them is rescuing people from areas that are difficult to get to by land. I'm here at Her Majesty's Coast Guard base in North Wales to meet an amazing rescue helicopter and her crew. The helicopter behind me is used to rescue people in need from the sea or from the mountains. If someone hurts themselves on top of a mountain, it's impossible to get an ambulance up there, so the Coast Guard's called. A rescue can come any time of day or the middle of the night, and it sounds as if the crew have a rescue call coming in now. They all spring to action at once. First, they look at a map of the area to check for any dangers and work out the best route. Just look at this amazing tractor pulling the helicopter out of the hangar. Now it's time for the crew to put their special safety gear on. Everything has a purpose. This life-saving jacket will inflate so that the crew member floats in water. And it even has its own air supply, just in case they find themselves underwater and need to breathe fresh air. Then, it's out to the helicopter to fly. On board are pilot Mike, Captain Kate, John the winch operator, and Tomo the winch man. It's Tomo's job to get lowered out of the helicopter to rescue someone on the ground. After a few safety checks, it's time for takeoff. This whole process, from call to flight, takes the crew under 15 minutes. Engine start. Look at how fast those rotors can turn. The rotors chop through the air and make everything around them very windy. Whoa, I can hardly stay on my feet. Red Mechanical. Let's use your super slow motion camera to see just how many times those rotors are turning. I love using Gecko Super Slow Mo, mainly because it just looks cool. But look, a helicopter's rotor blades can spin 10 times per second. Oh dear, are you okay, Red Mechanical? As the rotors spin faster, the helicopter lifts off the ground and flies into the air. Captain Kate controls the helicopter by pointing the rotor blades in the direction she wants the helicopter to fly. Today the crew are practicing their winching skills using a dummy instead of a real person. The pilot skillfully hover over the area just above where the dummy is. Tomo clips himself to the winch and John carefully lowers him down. Tomo would then check how poorly the person on the ground is 
before winching both of them back up to the helicopter safely. Nicely done, team! Back at base, the engineers are always on hand to make sure the helicopters are in the best working order and ready to fly. Safety is the most important thing, and these engineers are the best in the business. It's a real team effort keeping these amazing helicopters flying and rescuing people in need. This is Tom and Kev. Tom's a pilot and Kev is a winch operator. They're going to give us a quick tour inside the helicopter. Welcome everyone to the S92 search and rescue helicopter. First and foremost, very importantly, we've got two large winches here. And these winches have got two straps, and the idea of this is we can lower these down to people in the water or on a mountain and pick them up and take them to safety. So let's look inside now in the aircraft itself. And as you can see as you come into this helicopter, it's a large space. Here we've got a camera which we use when we're searching for people. This can pick up people on the water, on the mountainside. So when we've picked up our patient, which we've taken off the hoist, we bring them into, into the aircraft itself and we can put them onto this, our stretcher. And they may well be in the stretcher, but this is a lovely area for us to work on them and make them feel comfortable in the aircraft and we can give them medical treatment if they require it. Once we get to the hospital, we need to get our patient out of the aircraft safely and the best way we can do that is we lead them and lift them off here down through the ramp itself off the aircraft into the hospital where they can be looked after. Okay this is the cockpit of the helicopter there are two pilots one sits here in this chair and the other one sits on the other side these are the controls to fly the helicopter this one moves the helicopter forwards and backwards and this one moves it up and down and then there's two pedals down on the floor as well and that keeps the helicopter straight. We've got two engines and they're controlled on these screens and then we've got a map in the middle to see where we're going. Thanks very much to the amazing team here at the Coast Guard base. Bye! Hello everyone! I'm spending the day with a real ambulance today. We're going to be having a look inside and going out on the road with the ambulance crew and visiting a special garage just for ambulances. Ambulances are one of the most important vehicles on the road. They're used to pick up people who are poorly or who've hurt themselves and get them to hospital as quickly as possible. An ambulance really is like a mini hospital on wheels. Everything in the back is here to treat people on the way to hospital. Let's meet the ambulance crew. This is Terry, the emergency medical technician and he's just checking the ambulance to make sure everything's working properly before call out. And this is Paul, the paramedic. Paul decides how to help the poorly person on the way to the hospital and can give them special medicine. Paul lowers this special ramp by pressing a button. The ramp makes it easier to get patients on board the ambulance. If a patient needs to lie down, Paul and Terry will use this stretcher. They can then wheel the patient up the ramp and into the back of the ambulance. These special seats can fold out so that someone from the patient's family can stay with them on the way to hospital. Paul, the paramedic, can use all of this medicine and these amazing tools to make people feel better. There's also a special hatch okay. so that Paul Terry, and Terry all can all talk to each other. Okay. Yeah, all stay Over the radio, the crew have received a real call out. It's time to go to work. When a call comes in, it's time for Paul and Terry to turn the lights on and drive quickly to their patient. That means they're even allowed to drive through red lights. Paul and Terry's aim 
is always to get the patient to hospital as quickly and safely as possible. The crew and their vehicles work really, really hard, with these ambulances doing hundreds of miles a day. This also means that sometimes things can break. But luckily, a garage has been built specially for fixing ambulances. Have you ever seen so many ambulances in one place? The expert mechanics in this amazing workshop can fix around 25 ambulances a day. Hey, what was that? Blue Mechanical! How on earth did you get in here? You better stay out of trouble. It looks like there's something wrong with one of the flashing lights on this ambulance. So it's up to Tim the Mechanic to fix the problem. There, that's better. Good as new. We can't have an ambulance without flashing lights, can we? After travelling hundreds of miles, ambulances can also get very dirty, so this is where they're given a good wash. Blue Mechanical, you better watch you don't get wet. Uh-oh, too late. Thanks very much to Paul, Terry and the whole team at the Northwest Ambulance Service for teaching us about the important service that you provide. Bye! Hello everyone! I'm here at the Tarmac Quarry to meet an amazing digger called an excavator. Excavators are the perfect vehicles for digging up loose rock. Instead of wheels, excavators run on caterpillar tracks, which are really good at gripping onto all sorts of surfaces so that the excavator doesn't slip. That means they can climb up really steep, rocky surfaces like this. Here on this quarry, they're mining for limestone rock. But to break the huge rock faces into smaller pieces, the team from Tarmac plant explosives into the rock. Using explosives is really, really dangerous, which is why the team here are specially trained. They drill holes all the way along the rock and fill them up with the explosives. Then it's time to detonate. Stand by. Three, two, one. Now the excavators can move in to dig up all of the loose rock. This is the boom, the dipper and the bucket. These three parts all work together to make the excavator amazing at digging. The arm can dig really deep and reach really far. Wow! I'm an excavator And digging is my job I'm an excavator It's time to load this rock Round and round and up and down An excavator digs The rocks and rubble from the ground Underneath the twigs there's no trouble loading and we're filling up the lorry These rocks will make a new road now We've dug them from the quarry I'm an excavator And digging is my job I'm an excavator It's time to load this rock I'm an excavator And digging is my job I'm This is Dave, the operator of this excavator. 
once he's inside, he can use these two joysticks to control exactly what the arm does. He scoops up as much loose rock as possible, lifting it high into the air, and drops it into this machine, which then crushes and sorts the rock into large, medium, and small sizes. This rock can then be used to build houses, roads, and for farming. Excavators can move in amazing ways. The cab, arm and bucket can spin all the way around whilst the tracks stay still. This is called 360 degree movement. Woo! Dave, are you dizzy yet? Using the pedals in the cab, Dave can make the excavator move side to side like a crab. Left, right, left, right. And they can move forwards and backwards. Forwards and backwards. Excavators can also load rock into dumper trucks. Once the rock is ready to load, the dumper truck reverses into place and the bucket drops the load of rock into the hopper on the back. Good job, everyone! I've loved learning all about these amazing excavators today. Thanks to Dave and all the team at Tarmac for showing us what they can do. We'll see you again soon. Bye! If you love this video, tap here so you're the first to know about my latest videos. Thanks for watching! Bye!